reality. Hi, I'm Derek at Reality, and today I'll be demonstrating the P-Series scanner from Leica Geosystems. Because the P-Series is a long-range precision scanner, the number of setups I'll have to take to adequately capture this site is minimal. The first step is to set up the survey tripod and make sure it's stable. I want to make sure the tripod doesn't shift while the scanner is in operation. Then I mount the scanner on the tripod. The scanner comes with a tri-brack, which is already attached, so all I have to do is lift it onto the tripod and tighten the screw. I turn the scanner on by pressing the silver power button. I can use the on-screen controls and the stylus to choose my scan settings. Here in the status menu, I can see the state of my batteries and memory. The scanner only uses one battery at a time and automatically switches to the next one when empty. I don't need to turn the scanner off to change the battery if there's charge remaining in the other one. The system info panel will show me information about my instrument, firmware, and my activated options, like the API for special applications to control the scanner and an external camera controlled by the scanner. By the way, you can also get a special handle mount that will hold a prism or a survey grade GNSS antenna. The level and laser plummet panel will allow me to more perfectly level the scanner using the precise on-screen digital level once I've brought it close using the bubble level on the scanner or tri -brack. The laser plummet, if on, will allow me to set up over a known coordinate. If you're doing this, you'll likely want to measure your instrument height using the special measuring tape like I'm doing here. And finally, the compensator, if on, will either cancel scan and image or flag data and continue if it goes beyond the acceptable tilt range of the scanner. The connections panel will let you decide whether you want to have the scanner's Wi-Fi on or off or always on, as well as share its connection details. In the configuration menu, I can set my units for distance, temperature, and pressure, set my date and time, my language, and configure wake-up settings if needed. In the settings, you can choose to calibrate the compensator before the first scan of each project, check for the handle being in the way of overhead scans, show the scan result after each scan, turn the fan cooling on or off, which you'll want to turn off when it's very cold, or if you're in a very dusty area to reduce fine particles from entering the scanner. You can also turn on a guiding beam and the ability to switch the scanner on by plugging in the power. You'll need an extra AC power supply accessory to do that. The EDM panel will let you choose the defaults for overview and detail scans. And finally, you can choose display and intensity settings here. In the tools menu, you'll be able to format internal or external drives, transfer data back and forth, including projects and system files, upload a new license and calibrate your screen. You can also transfer data using the data copy tool on your computer and the included ethernet cable or by Wi-Fi. More importantly, the tools menu contains the check and adjust panel where you can check angular parameters, set range parameters, check tilt compensator and view the current calibration. In the manage menu, you'll be able to create and edit projects, targets and control points. In the traverse menu, You'll have the ability to configure and scan using the traverse method, but we will do free station scanning today, which is done through the last menu we will look at, the scanning menu. Once you choose your project, you can press continue. In the field of view panel, you can choose whether you want to target all, which means a full dome scan, or whether you want to do a custom scan. When choosing a custom scan, you can change the angles shown manually, or you can use the camera to choose the area to scan. Let's leave it to target all. Then we'll want to choose scan and image as our task. The resolution panel will let you choose the density and sensitivity of your scans. The image control panel will let you choose whether to use automatic or manual exposure, white balance settings, image resolution, and whether to use HDR imaging. The filter menu will let you turn on a minimum and or maximum range to scan. And finally, the EDM menu will let you choose how far you want your max range to be. Now that we're all set, we will do our first scan by pressing start. The scanner now slowly turns 180 degrees to collect a full dome scan. 
Then it will rotate another 180 degrees stopping incrementally to take 274 photos, which will be blended together to make a full dome image equivalent to up to 700 megapixels. If you want to take detail scans or measure targets, it's important to do that now before we move the scanner or even press start again, as that will iterate to a new setup. To do a detail scan, let's first set our parameters and then fence out areas and click the plus button. Once done, press the play button and it will go do all the detail scans you've identified. The scan preview is pretty handy for these detail scans. Now for targets, it is a very similar process. We name the targets, choose them from the scan data or the video camera, and then choose measure. Once this process is complete, I take the scanner off the tripod and move to my next setup location where I repeat the process. But for this next setup, we'll switch to the Cyclone Field 360 app to show how to do this remotely. Cyclone Field 360 allows me to do pre-registration work in the field so I can see if I'm missing anything by viewing the data, add geotags, and also it will save me lots of registration time when I load this data on the computer. When I'm done my scans, I transfer the project data onto a USB key and pack up my equipment. I now import and register my scans using Cyclone Register 360 and export the resulting point cloud into a useful file format. In this case, I'm exporting to the LGS file format so I can open the file in any of Leica's Reality Capture software. We look into Cyclone Register 360 and Cyclone Field 360 more in depth in other videos. Check out the notes below for more details and be sure to follow us on social media to keep up to date on everything Reality Capture.